sometimes you would like to combine the information from two input features or more, but there is no attribute that you can actually join these two features on. So you can't perform an attribute join. What you can do is perform a spatial join, meaning you would basically be performing a spatial overlay query where one's layers, attributes, populate another layer's features where those two intersect or overlie. So as you can see here, I've got electoral reward outlines, and then I've got zoning information. Let's say I would like to know what type of zoning do I have per electoral ward? So what do I have here? What do I have in this particular electoral ward? 1556, or in this one, 1555, and so forth. The process is very similar to that of the attribute join. So you access it through the actual layer itself, and you're going to do a join and read layers again, but this time you're going to do a special join. I would like to know what zoning information it falls within each electoral ward. So I'm going to do the join onto the electoral ward feature class. The interface that pops up is again a special join tool from the geoprocessing tab. So I'm going to join the features on from the electoral wards and I'm going to join from the zoning feature class. It's going to give it a default name. And again, you have a one-to-one -one or one-to-many join option. So one-to-one -one basically means you're going to just have one uh, have one table with only these four entries listed. So they're all the information of the zoning information that intersects with these four different um, ward outlines will be summarized into one line in the table. If I do a one to many, you will have multiple entries here. Every time a zoning parcel intersects with one of these wards, there will be a new entry entered into the output table. So we'll keep it for one to one for now. And then you have a choice of how you're going to summarize based on the fields of the two layers. For example, I could say I'm interested in the zoning code. And I know the zoning code, for example, is the, has the zoning information in it, this one there. The merge rule is what do I want to summarize on? Do I want to know the average code for the electoral ward, the mean? Do I want the most commonly occurring one? That's the medium. Do I want to know what the range is? What is the lowest code? What is the highest code? What is the maximum code, etc.? How many zoning, different zoning types occur within each electoral ward? So we can say that, for example. And then you run it to, and the output will be generated for you. If you open up that table, you'll see that again, because it was a one-to-one, -one, I retained the four entries in the original table, and all the information from the original table is retained as well. However, I do have additional information attached to it. So here's, for example, basic land, units, and so forth. What is of interest here are the, um, the zoning entries or the zoning codes in particular. So I said that I wanted to count how many different zoning types or parcels intersect each electoral ward. So for the first one, I've got 4,521, second one, 4,551, and so forth. So this tells me how many individual parcels are actually intersecting within each of these electoral ward outlines. In essence, the count is very similar to the join count. The join count is populated automatically once you do a special join. It tells you how many input fields or input features are joined to the particular target feature. In my case, it's the four electoral wards. Just to illustrate different things you can do, for example, I would like to know what is the average code that is within each electoral ward. So I've got the join count again. There's so many individual parcels are intersecting each electoral ward. But then if I go back to zoning, the average zoning code per ward is two or three. 
and that will tell me what the most what the average one is i can of course also select the most common one which would be the median that's a slightly different um, calculation so if you go back to the zoning field there you'll see that the most common one is actually one in this instance so if you'd like to know what that is of course, you can create an attribute join to the zoning codes, but you can see special residential is the most commonly occurring zoning type within each electoral board. Similarly, you can do all kinds of statistics based on the, the spatial join. If you have a nominal entry, so you don't have a number that is stored in the field, you cannot do all of this. You can only do those statistical methods that apply to nominal data, for example, the first, the last, the count, the minimum, the maximum, and the join. I can, of course, also perform a spatial join based on a one-to-many -to relationship. So if I just run it as it was before, and I open up the layer that is created, you'll see that the entries are very different. There's lots more entries here, 18,416. And Every single parcel that intersects with each of those electoral wards is now actually assigned. So now from this, based on this, not only do you know how many would occur per electoral ward, you can also identify which individual parcels intersect with that electoral ward. You can see here the join count is set to 1, as it should be. And the previous example, this join count was a summary of how many parcels intersected with each ward.